So I'm talking a little bit about some of the experiences in the Samba team over the last year. Our relationship with Microsoft over the last year has changed rather dramatically. We talked a little bit about what we hoped it to be at the last conference when Tridge gave his talk and, uh, and I gave a talk at the SysAdmin Mini Conference. Um, but it really has changed quite dramatically in the last year and so I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour through some of the things that have gone well and some of the other things that have gone on during the year. Myself, uh, I work for Red Hat full time, uh, but these are my opinions, I have many of them. Um, I'm certainly not shared by my company um, and I really like questions during the talk. Uh, I even have a packet of chockies here, some of which will be a prize for some of the questions at the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so questions during the talk are most appreciated. Just put up your hand and we'll... Um, I'm, I have a pile of slides, but I'll be very happy if this talk just goes right off the rails into somewhere where the audience finds interesting. As most of you would know, SAM before is aiming to be a replacement for Active Directory. The centre of a Windows domain, the, the thing that binds most corporate networks together. And so we have to provide quite a few services that otherwise don't exist. A Windows compatible domain logon server, the Windows compatible LDAP server because Microsoft does a very different way of doing LDAP to the rest of the world, and Kerberos with uh, Microsoft extensions. And these things are more than just dump the existing open source projects together and somehow you come up with an AD replacement. It's quite a lot of work. Uh, Microsoft until recently didn't document uh, a lot of the things we need to do here and we've um, been working on it for about the last four years. Um, Trudge can probably remember when he started. I've forgotten in the mists of time. <laughs> but in particular, uh, the idea of Samba 4 is to move, before NT, move beyond NT4 domains. Uh, we recently had a little thing come up with Microsoft where suddenly Windows 7 wouldn't work with Samba 3 domains. Now, that's all being worked on very nicely and you know, very panicky on the part of some of my Microsoft friends. Um, but um, I really want to be able to move, the, move beyond this really ancient and nasty technology that's existed in NT4 uh, so that we can have Samba domains also handling Kerberos correctly. Because it seems silly that the open source solution is the one stuck with using the most proprietary logon technique. Samba 4 is also a good file server. Talk to Tridge about that. He did some awesome work on SMB2. But that's not the area I'll be talking about today. Microsoft. I'm looking for my Microsoft friends. Ah, there they are. I couldn't spot you before. <laughs> Our partners in this dance. I mean, without, without Microsoft, would Samba be here? Probably in a very different form. <laughs> I'm not sure that's necessarily a good thing, but um, the, it is um, Microsoft that now provides us with documentation. We, um, in the court case that occurred uh, the year before last now, um, Microsoft was required to produce protocol documentation. But they've taken the steps that they were required to do and gone a step further that we really like. We have the right to this documentation under NDA that allowed us to write code, a lot like some of the driver stuff is done, where the hardware, doc hardware documentation is available as long as you can, and you can write GPL code, but you can never give away the actual docs. And Microsoft then took the next step and said, this documentation is now free to the whole public to see. And this has made it so much easier for a whole world of people to see and use this documentation. And um, has also opened up a process where we can look for clarification issues in the documentation and uh, ask questions and get a lot of things solved. So firstly, I thought I'd have a, a tour through the good. In the last year, Sam has done some other things that weren't just related to Microsoft. We've also really tried to solve uh, some questions about um, Samba 3 and Samba 4. I'll get your question in a moment. Um, we had two code bases in the Samba team. We basically forked. It really wasn't pretty in some senses. And so lots of little changes in any forked project, even when there's a great effort to try and you know, keep things together, little things happen. And so in the last year, a great effort's been made to have common code for anything that could be in common and ensure that we had build systems could, that could reach into common directories, even though they were two still separate build systems and sort of separate sides of the project. We tried it before with going, well, if it's in common, it should be a system library. It didn't seem to work. We never got the releases out. We never got the... Uh, it just never seemed to quite happen properly. So instead, a new tree was formed with Samba 3 and Samba 4 sides, and then um, a pull-down of common components into a top-level directory. 
and, uh, and this has become the, the new way that the master branch in Samba, uh, in Samba development has, has gone, and Samba 3.3 will be released from this branch. Uh, the remaining code that still is in a source 3 and source 4 directory, so that the, uh, for things that aren't in common yet. Uh, was there a question in here? There's a protocol called LLDP, which is like the um, discovery of like layer two topology stuff that like Vistra and such is doing. I know the license for that was like crazy NDA. Do you know if they've opened some of that stuff up? Or if it was just the Samba stuff or? Okay. So, so the question was, was, was about a, another protocol called LDP. My, my friends at Microsoft could probably look up the list faster than I could. They released 300 different protocols um, under the, um, uh, into the public and um, um, most of the stuff's there. I don't know very much that isn't there, uh, but my, my friends at Microsoft could probably clarify. Uh, another thing that's gone on in Samba 4 recently is open change. It's on project, but something we've been care very, very keen about and also been a really nice driver behind getting Sam before into distributions because open change is about providing a Microsoft Exchange client uh, that isn't just sort of, well, we can use the IMAP server, but the calendaring doesn't work. And, well, most sysadmins just won't turn on the IMAP server. They, they think it's a security risk, so I'm stuck. Or they won't turn on the web dev server for the Outlook web access or you know, the dodginess of that thing was just too dodgy, dodgy. I mean, you know, all these reasons... Um, are great reasons why Open Change is an excellent project. Now, you can see uh, Brad's talk on that on Friday, uh, but it's also a great driver behind Samba because it's provided a user, and we love users. As you saw, uh, as, as those of you who were at the sysadmin mini conference said, you know, I'm begging to find users in the sysadmin community, but this is another user of Samba. So it's meant that we actually got our libraries in order. And so instead of Samba, well, here's this pile of stuff, you might be able to figure out a way to use it. It's, okay, we've got to get serious. We need a shared library. We need a sensible set of headers. And we're going to actually have to be serious about providing it. And that has been a great thing for the Samba project. And so now that we have in the last day had a Samba 4 release, I'll talk about it in a moment, and OpenChange has been doing some. And so we've been able to work together to get these technologies out to the public. We've also done some things with OpenLDAP. I've had people come from the community and help code up a multi-master OpenLDAP backend to Samba 4. We've done the OpenLDAP backend stuff before, where we keep this Active Directory schema on OpenLDAP. It's not so useful, but it means I don't have to think about multi-master replication. That's Handlebase, another project. Earlier on, we also had Fedora Directory Server doing the same thing. They've got a multi-master backend. Currently, the linkage between Samba and OpenLDAP is the more mature. So that's why I example it here. So these things we've been getting onto in the last year, and it's been really great to see the, some of the community become engaged in it, because I didn't write the code to, make this, uh, to generate up this configuration. I just was able to tweak it and include it. And that means that I don't have to try and understand OpenLDAP configuration files, which are hideous. We've also been working on some other little things. Microsoft compatible NTP. Uh, Microsoft um, had a di has a different way of doing NTP uh, authentic proving that you're sending the correct time so you can't screw with people. Uh, but they flipped a bit order and they did a few odd things, so we had to put a custom patch into NTP. But that's all in uh, on our side and waiting patches on the NTP uh, side. So uh, these things are now new features in Samba. And this was a lot of it. It was later at my first deployment. Uh, I have a Russian connection. He doesn't want me to use his name. And he's been running Samba for about the last six months. It's a 20-person arm of a larger company, and he didn't really like being in, the, in, in another division's Active Directory server, which was his previous solution. So because he's the one-man IT department, he gets to make the decisions. If it all fails, well, he complains to himself, and he you know, has a chat with me, and we try and figure it out. He's also very cluey. So he was, you know, he's solved some things on his own, and he's been really good with picking up some of the bugs. And in the last six months, it's gone from having various errors in the event log and things not quite working right to being now running clean, uh, the time's kept, kept accurate, the logons all work, machines stay in the domain. That kind of testing is what's make, make, got Sam before to where it is today. He's hoping some more things to link better to his parent company. And so that's one of the things I'm looking at, particularly around domain trust. And he's got some other uh, things that he's going to need to be able to keep his company off his back once they finally find out what he's doing. <laughs> But you know, he's, he hopes to also the other way to be able to say, look, you didn't know for six months. You know, it works. You know, other things you'd expect out of Samba are fairly normal. Uh, Windows, all the Windows versions join. 
We do have Microsoft Management Console support. That's one of the questions I got at the sysadmin mini conference. Um, all, the, all the admin tools generally work. Now, group policy works, and the degrees group policy doesn't work. Our friends at Microsoft have been helping me with that. Uh, next time someone else can set up a demo, we've been having some people set up proofs that things don't work, but then repurpose the machine. So I need, we need to do some more work to just actually work through the problem. Because when I can give a consistent reproducible test case and someone who's doing it, I've also got engineers at Microsoft who are willing to work through the traces and ask back and forward. Uh, an amazing relationship we really haven't had in the past. We're now using Python internally uh, to make it easy to script up bits of Samba. And we also have smart card logon support. Um, we know that uh, almost no one actually carries a smart card around. Very few companies use it. But it's something that we actually got for free due to the Heimbrook Kerberos distribution working hard to provide that many years ago. And so that stuff's come through. We include the Heimbrook, and it actually just worked. It was rather odd. <laughs> Nothing ever just works. I'm proud to announce Samba 4 Alpha 6 released to the MERS the last couple of days, and the announcement email was sent out this morning. The first release from the MERS tree of Samba, and represents a really stable spot that we've got to in the last few months of Samba development. It also means OpenChange can re uh, release, them, release their release based on an actual alpha release of ours, not just this Git snapshot that is known to work. And um, it also provides better compatibility with Samba 3. I've been working the last few months on some things that Samba 3 uses that Samba 4 didn't yet provide. So about the documentation. Last year we had everything in private. And I signed my subcontractor agreement and I got access to the, you know, not to be passed to else docs. But now we have over 300 protocols publicly documented and with Microsoft engineers that will respond to public as well as private requests for clarification. I certainly think this is a very good thing and they should be applauded for it. Microsoft also held plug fests. We put on two in September and October last year. They sponsored a plug fest that in past years they'd refused to even turn up to. They um, also put on a plug fest for the Samba team. The plug fest that they sponsored allows the whole SIS community to get together in a room and sit down, networking all provided, food provided, 24-hour you know, access to the room, and sit down and make things work. So I was there testing Samba 4 against EMC, NetApp, Apple, all the different vendors with the engineers from those vendors there. I mean, I've got a little Mac at home, but it's one, an entirely different thing to get the development version of the next software tested. And so those things were very, very useful to us. Microsoft sponsoring that really shows a change in, the, in Microsoft's attitude to some of this. We know there are some other challenges with Microsoft and protocols. Anyone who was at Tridge's uh, little discussion with Microsoft on Monday would have heard that. But I'm telling this from my perspective, and I really like seeing this kind of work with Microsoft. Microsoft then hosted a special event for us in Redmond. They've told me that I'm invited back next year, so um, we're hoping to do this again. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Apparently I was volunteered. In any case, I, uh, we had a wonderful week in Redmond. So how do you travel to a great American company? No, not in one of these. By train, of course, the great American mode of travel. So we had three of us, you know, sitting around a table, hacking all the way to Redmond. And beautiful scenery, too. But this is what we were there to get to. That's Richard Guthrie and myself sitting in the lab that was set up. And we had about four Microsoft engineers, four or five, sitting around uh, working, doing testing, so Tridge was at one side of the room testing with one engineer. I had Richard and a couple of others working with me on some other problems. And we worked through test suites. Microsoft has written not just protocol documentation, but to prove that it's not just a fantasy novel, they've been writing tests where they only give their testers the uh, documentation and they try to prove that it's correct. They can run the test suite against Samba, against Windows. Um, this has been a very interesting challenge. Tridge has quite the, the smile on his face for what the... <laughs> oh yes, my shoelace broken. I think I turned one of these into the shoelace. <laughs> the, um, so that, this was an incredibly useful time and something that we've never had this kind of access before. We also saw some long-standing bugs 
when we dragged in Microsoft's developers uh, from other parts of the campus to sit down and break it, you know, and with you know, one computer on the Microsoft pri private network looking through source code, the other computer on the network here, you know, trailing through trying to get debug logs and to tell me where I'd screwed up. And you know, it, it was amazing getting, that kind of thing is the detail that I just can't work out at home. I can you know, send you a few error messages and things, but these, these in-person plug pests are amazing for really getting to the bottom of problems. We're also getting more than just, here's the documentation, you should be smart enough to figure it out. Because sometimes I'm just not quite smart enough to figure it out. So sometimes I need things really pointed out to me. So I had this blob at the top, and I thought I knew how it worked, but Richard was adamant that I got it wrong. So he went, he went through and he hand parsed it himself and pointed out with this lovely color-coded chart exactly which bit was which. In particular, I was convinced that the uh, RX-38 at the start uh, was actually a, um, a length, because it looks like a length. Everything parses right as a length. But in fact, it's proof that there is nothing between the end of the yellow and the start of the next thing, which is green there. Um, it's very odd, but the, the level of time and effort he placed into trying to explain this to me was really very useful. And so I'll go back and I'll find a little hand parser for this because you can't actually do it any other way. Uh, but this kind of useful back and forward makes my job so much easier. Because I would have, in our old way of working, I would have said, oh sure, that, 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 that's an offset and a length. I'll just go through and do it, and I get onto something else. And you never know, without you know, actually going through and having this two-way thing where I say, look, the doc says this is a, you know, another offset, but I think it's a length. I think the docs are wrong. And I kept on swearing that the docs are wrong. I was sure of it. And it's that two-way back and forward process we now have that allows us to get real answers and real things right. Apparently I will someday see something where there will be, in fact, some data um, at that offset. Yeah. I'm not awake enough to figure that one out. It's exactly what he gave me, but I'd have, to, I'd have to figure that out, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Some things haven't been so, so good. Um, chasing down bugs in Samba is always a, a challenge. This one was a, a doozy. Um, it, it did actually also show how the lengths Microsoft would go to get us the answer. But when Microsoft went to change its pass, when Windows went to change its password every month, it would take a Unicode string, which in Microsoft is sort of two-byte pairs, and would fill it with random data. These don't tend to produce valid characters in general, because it's a multi-byte character set. So it then encrypted it, sent it across the, across the wire, and we, you know, we got this string. It's bad if you just convert a string that you can't convert to zero length. It doesn't really help security and the clients can't log in either. We actually had to rework our whole protocol stack because it turns out that we have to handle one half of the password change as get that random string without ever touching it and put, do an MD4 over it. And for the other half of the password types that have to be stored, you have to go through and say, well, here is the function for determining whether something's a valid or an invalid character. It was something about high and low surrogates. Trich had to do the hard work. Um, and basically filter it out for invalid characters and replace it with a special I am not a valid character character. And then you would go through and then do a normal change that to UTF-8, which then did the right things. This is a little hairy. But Microsoft did provide us with the information we needed uh, to, get the, um, to get this handled. It's something we couldn't have ever have done without that kind of direct relationship with Microsoft because I would never have guessed quite. We got a detailed email with the exact step, a set of steps that we needed to go through. Another of our little challenges we've had over the years was um, a pack validation error uh, where occasionally and more occasionally than my laptop would see. I, I never saw this um, on my laptop until the final stages of debugging. At the customer site only. How many of you have had bugs you can only find at the customer site? <laughs> Thought so. Um, so at, at my user's site, the, um, 
it would go pack validation error and something wouldn't work, but it wasn't really clear. And you know, most logons would still happen. Turns out that um, in Microsoft's world, there is a pack attached to every Kerberos ticket. Proves the, the groups that a user is a member of. And Microsoft doesn't quite trust this in very specific situations involving the machine trying to log into itself. And what it does is it goes and says, I want to be sure that this is valid, and sends it off to the KDC for an extra check. And we didn't implement the check function. And I also had to clarify the documentation to do it. But this is why real-world testing Samba is vital. Because unless we have people running it long enough to find things that only occur occasionally, we'll never move Samba beyond an alpha. We actually have to, you know, so we do need some people to willing to step out a little and say, well, I'm going to give it a real go. It seems to be working well enough for now. And find little things that only occur after time. The docs are certainly not perfect. Uh, the way my Microsoft colleagues here uh, describe it is as an, it was an archaeological process to even produce them. Going back through the source code and trying to write protocol documentation from that. I mean, when NT was written, those people have been and gone from Microsoft. They've probably found their, their, their villa in the mountains and, and, and living off their stock options. But it's... Um, so apparently there are, you know, the process to even uh, to get these details was quite a challenge. And apparently they didn't have internal documentation. It's cost them quite a lot to put it together. And it's costing us quite a bit to keep it right. Because we found that we, we know more than Microsoft does on some of these things. So we have a back and forward process to make, the, uh, to make the documentation correct so that we can go forward. But the other thing that the docs provide a challenge for is it's really hard to ethically, honestly do a half-assed job anymore. I can't say, well, look, that's as much as I could figure out. I'm just going to do that much and just leave the rest. I just, I just don't know how it works. I've got how it works in front of me. I've got the full scope of the complexity. And I've got to, I, I actually have to either finish it or really know that I've not finished it. And so <laughs> these things take a bit of time. I think we are more productive when we run with the Microsoft documentation than we were before. I know I swore at them a few, fair bit when we started, but we really do get, not having to do the first network protocol analysis stage, we do have to do the testing. We've got to, still got to prove everything in test suites because you can get subtle details of the documentation wrong. But you don't have to, you know, first you know, go out and try and scan for everything and try and figure out, do these levels even exist? But the other thing that hasn't happened, that we just kept on wishing would happen, would be there'd be some mystical rush of new developers. Everyone would say, well, look, I don't have to do that anymore. It's no longer that hard. You know, I'll be able to join the Samba team and get all these things done. And we really haven't seen anyone else join the team uh, or, or really start in, in efforts in, their, um, in this area that wasn't working on it before. And so while it may have made existing developers more productive, we haven't really seen a, a, a big change in the way Samba's developed. And I think that's a bit sad, because it is a lot easier. Finally, I've got a little few things that are a bit ugly. This is where I've got a few prizes. Um, firstly, I've got my, my, my gripe that um, the not-so-abstract data model. The, Active Directory Protocol Suite is all set up as a series of documents that don't really talk to each other. They try and describe each protocol as if it existed on its own, as if you could just purchase one of them and just implement that. And they talk about terms that don't really match between all the documents, and so they don't match onto the data store that all the documents have to reference, because anything you get to on the LSA protocol or the SAMR protocol or the NetLogon protocol all appear back in, you can see them in LDAP. And if you can't see them in LDAP, you can see them across the replication protocol that you need to use to pull a new data set across from Windows. So there's this common data store that everything must use. But they're not the, it, that common data store isn't what is generally referenced throughout the documentation as the names of things. Now, there are workarounds in progress. I'm getting uh, new tables put in the front of the documents to say, when we say this, we mean that. And it's great, but it's not yet consistent through everything. And this has been you know, one of the uglier things to occur through the, uh, through the time. Uh, I, I'm told that this is imposed by the lawyers, that the EU trustee has apparently insisted on it. I don't know. I just, I, I, I'm an engineer trying to implement it, and it's, a, and it's one of my, you know, the things that's the right pill. 
The other thing that's a bit ugly is that the lawyers really are watching. This has been recorded, no doubt someone will transcribe it. Something I say will end up in, in, a, in a court memo somewhere. Because the other things I've said certainly have. I wrote a lovely blog post trying to explain you know, these things that we're doing and how well this is all working. This was Microsoft's submission to the, the oversight judge. And similarly, when I said that the documents have been written that have frustrate the implementer at every turn, and it really felt that way, that was similarly put to the courts. <sighs> maybe I should watch what I say, or maybe it's just that it is both. We have both an amazing opportunity. We have the biggest dump of documentation of protocols that I think we've ever seen, but we've also got challenges. We've got templates that were written by lawyers, not programmers. And we've got a process that isn't really quite perfect, but is pretty, you know, it gets you down or it gets you up. And, uh, but that's the world of Sabre development at the moment, and it's an amazing difference to the, to the world we had before. But finally, this is my real gripe. I would like somebody in the audience, I have prizes, to tell me. I want to put this value onto the wire, so I need to put it as a numeric constant in my source code. Can someone, not in the same team or from Microsoft, please tell me the value of H? Yes, the document is indeed full of, um, you know, see here for the Windows behaviour note. <laughs> no, it is not three. <laughs> Any other guesses? No. Yeah, you've got to set that bit. This, this, this represents a word. You've got to set that bit. What, 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 what number do I put in my source code to set that bit? In hexadecimal or decimal? <laughs> yeah, so you take, you take the bit and you raise it to the right power and, 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 you, and you put that as your, as your constant. So what? Yeah, yeah. Is it is it one if everything else is zero and zero otherwise? It's um the, the zero. Exactly. <laughs> the um it is not as you might otherwise assume. Take the number on top and raise it two to the power of that number. That would be too easy. It's instead walk how many from the other end and then raise that power. You're also thrown off by the fact that um, there is no gap between, there's a gap between G and, um, and F there, and so you can't just walk down that number because otherwise you get to 7 to the 2, you know, 128. It is indeed 256. Um, I don't like parsing these things, and clearly this audience doesn't either. Um, I respectfully ask for it to be um, assisted. Um, <laughs> but this is one of the things that Microsoft has promised to try and work on, but I find these things impossible. And the only way I actually, uh, you know, I can figure it out, but the way I do it is I look into some other source code and hope we already have the, um, this particular bit already defined. Now, uh, any other questions? Or did I take them all at this admin mini conference? <laughs> you said right at the start you talked about the file serving code and the domain controlling code. Is there any idea that in the future those two things are going to be separated like you're sort of making a library of the open change stuff? Are we likely to separate file server and domain control? No, um, because of the way the protocol works, we generally can't separate uh, our different daemons. Um, I mean, you, you can... 
we could potentially uh, have the file server sort of launch off the domain controller when we need to. Um, we haven't really seen a need to develop them separately enough like that. It's really good when we can let another project loose uh, to run their own, own thing there. We haven't really seen the need to uh, for Sambo. It's, um, it is launched in different, they're handled in different subdirectories and they're actually launched up as separate services that we could separate out a bit. Samba TNG tried this approach in the past of having little, tried to do little mini projects for the different bits, um, but I don't think uh, Samba needs to go down that route at the moment. Um, there's a, the only effort that's sort of separate to that is um, the project is looking at trying to find a way to combine the Samba 3 file serving code with Samba 4's domain controller because um, that would allow um, people who are more comfortable with that file serving code to actually get the new domain controller features. And there's some interesting stuff that's going on under the name of Frankie um, that might achieve that end. Um, well, I've actually got one or two more slides. How can you help? Install same before for me. Try down your environments. We are not AD experts. I had somebody post a, an article that got written about me to slash dot and someone said you know he said that it was something to do with password changing surely he would know all this stuff it's in AD 101 I never took AD 101 I don't have a thousand machine deployment I run a couple of virtual machines on my laptop uh, truth is about the same we do these tiny things we actually do need system administrators this is entirely the wrong conference to um, to ask about you know, finding AD experts. But that is actually one of the things that we need is um, people who have a larger deployment are willing to give things a try or can tell us about it. We also don't have some of the proprietary internal applications that would stop people deploying SAM before. So it would be useful to find someone who could be our AD expert um, and just sort of work through some of the things that where it's brilliantly clear if you know it only from the top down. We know it from the individual bits up. You know, we're the kind of people where it was a real war to find out what that bit was before we had documentation. And we're really specialised quite well at finding out that kind of low detail. Um, and we sort of hope it comes together into a nice coherent you know, pyramid at the top. But it's not how we see things and not where we come from. Which sort of relates to why it's still an alpha release. I was asked at the sysadmin mini conference uh, whether it was an alpha for, you know, whether we could just get an, a, a 1.0 release, just put it out there, just so that they could keep their bosses happy and they could give this a try. I certainly would think that doing a Samba 4.1.0 that was a bit different, you know, an AD release is a possibility that's, you know, branded 1.0 without, say, file server printing code that we particularly are trying to push is also being fully there. It's been done before with Samba 4 Wins, where a project was built to build just a Wins server. But we have to fix some of our lack of features in the domain controller, and in particular our lack of experience in running it. I really don't want to be foisting a 1.0 release on the community and saying, we think this is great, if I haven't had some really good testing from people who I know can cope with, with the challenges of alpha software, and can explain to their bosses, I'm running alpha software, it seems to be working well, and I'm not about to go and cry when things don't break. I'm going to work to try and fix it. Because otherwise, it really is trying to lie to our community. But it's, you know, if, if, if an AD release is something that there's particular demand for, it's something we will talk about. More questions? <coughs> Question up the back. I don't know if my voice will be carried. Yeah, but I don't carry the mic. Hi. I'm just wondering whether you had. Uh, feedback from other vendors like, uh, say, Apple, and um, they obviously benefit from the work that you do and uh, whether they've approached you or requested or provided any feedback on what you do? Apple. Hmm. Apple's an interesting case because they tend to do things on their own and not until afterwards. They're all very worried about leaking something. So I don't particularly hear things back from Apple. Um, they've, you know, they've been they, they, they run Samba in bits of their, uh, their systems. They've um, run Samba as a, against their LDAP server and things in a combined product. I'd really love to see their Apple Open Directory run Samba 4 as a front end, because I think that'd be a really, they, they've got their Open Directory thing right for, it's locked down, it's simple, you can only do the basic things, which is a very Apple way of doing things, but that's exactly who they're selling to. And I think Samba 4 would be the perfect complement into that. 
um, but I don't have any particular discussions with Apple at the moment. I've lost the contacts they sort of had there, they've moved on to other projects. Um, What's, what's, our, what's our contact medium and things? Okay, so I, I, I have my volunteer. Um, so I, had <laughs> I will give you my card. <laughs> um, I'm not like getting that out. Uh, how do we prefer to be contacted? We are generally on IRC when we're around. Um, the Samba Technical Channel on irc.freemo.net. Uh, email works. Um, and the Samba Technical mailing list is the appropriate place to ask Samba 4 questions. Sorry? What time for IRC? What time? Uh, in Australia's time zone. So, um, and in Europe's time zone, in whatever Yelma's time zone is. What do we decide that was? Ah, uh, moves drastically each day. We think he's about mid-Atlantic, but we're not sure. <laughs> uh, other questions? Samba 3 was small enough to embed. Is Samba 4 still going to be small enough to put on little devices? Samba 4 should actually be smaller if we get things right. It was built that way. Samba 3 has since got smaller than it used to be, partly from the pressure from what we can prove we can do this small. Um, Samba 4 brings in a few more libraries and things because we do the Kerberos thing, uh, but the original aim was actually produce a really tiny, minimal overhead server. Trich got the session overhead down to 20k or something. Um, I don't know whether it still is, I suspect it's blown out because uh, we haven't measured it recently. Um, but um, yeah, that, really, that was an original aim and I believe it's an aim that we can get back to if people are interested in. Uh, I certainly could see us trimming down the Kerberos stuff just to remove it because you may not do any authentication and things to, to trim out some of the file system space, but memory use we really should be able to keep quite low. We can run it in a single process where uh, we should really remove a lot of the overhead and that's where we've got about the 20k per authenticated session. Um, so, um, that, so it should be quite possible. Uh, are you looking at exporting some of the um, Samba services to U the Unix domain, i.e. Like authentication and all that? Using Samba 4 for Unix authentication and things? Um, we can, <laughs> I'm providing a terrible challenge for my cameraman. <laughs> It's still as usable as a Unix KDC and things if you want to provide Windows like in the same way the Active Directory is. We're not really aiming at trying to be an excellent Unix KDC or an excellent Unix LDAP server because we're actually a pathetic general purpose LDAP server. Um, we barely adhere to, we don't even have schema validation at the moment. Um, so we prefer to leave that to other projects like Free IPA and things. They're really trying to do the good combined Unix, uh, Kerberos and LDAP and things. But we want to provide a... Re I certainly am not about to create a project that alienates the Linux desktop just because we're trying to be like AD. That would be, you know, that would be counter to all our goals. So I'll do what I can to make that work well, but we have to sort of look after the Windows clients first because that's where there's no one serving. Does that sort of make sense? Yeah. Okay. This is more of a question for the Microsoft guys. I was wondering, um, after they were kind of compelled to be involved in this process, have they found that going through it, that Microsoft has, you know, found some benefits from the collaboration with the Samba team? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Um, it's been a great year working with the Samba team. Uh, started off. Uh, meeting the Samba guys for the first time about a year ago. I've been in my role for about a year and a half. And um, in, in the starting days, we were under the old proprietary documentation systems uh, and the licensing models that um, you all hated. Um, and then I was in the team that actually did the publication. And I was a big proponent in the company of, of getting the documentation out so that we could get past this um, blockage with all of the organizations around the world. Um, the unbelievable thing that's happened in the last year is uh, we've had over 400,000 downloads of the documentation sets. Um, I do a presentation on open protocol team and the amount of things that we do on a pretty regular basis. 
Uh, that's not to say that there are 400,000 developers utilizing the documentation and projects. That's absolutely not true. We don't track who, who's pulling the docs, um, how they're being utilized. It's free and open to use by anybody on the planet. If you have questions and you come ask us, then we, you know, then we can kind of figure out and see what you're doing. The work with the Samba guys has been awesome in the AD uh, in the SMB2 areas because they've been pushing the envelopes about getting the documentation exactly right, doing their implementation of our protocols. So thank you to the Samba guys and to the community. Thank you. Thanks. More of a big picture question, but I guess you've reflected, and we sort of touched on this on Monday, that in the past, if a company had a proprietary protocol and it just became a pain in the ass and nobody else supported it, it would go away and die in a short time or a long time. But essentially, the work that you're doing now is blessing these technologies with immortality. Have you ever considered that? <laughs> it, it certainly is a challenge having... Um, some of these things that really should have died ages ago um, live on through the, the work into free software. Microsoft has been trying to kill 56-bit uh, encryption. And um, they're, they're getting awfully worried whether we, they're going to break Samba because you know, there are Samba installs that are going to live on even longer than some of the Windows installs because you know, someone got Samba, you know, particularly 2.0, and embedded it into some NAS device and you know, they haven't budged since. Um, and so I suppose we do create some of the life for, for some of these NT4 domain technologies that really should have died out a long time ago because they were not secure in a number of ways and, and had a number of attack pro points. And uh, Samba has certainly made that technology last longer than I think it should have. But um, that's actually why I started on Samba 4, was I wanted to give us a way out of just running NT4 domains and NTLM authentication. Microsoft made the move to, the, you know, to Kerberos as a, as a standard. They made their changes to it, but they weren't so bad compared to how bad NTLM is. Um, and so that's part of why I actually really care about Sam before, is to be able to get those technologies out too. It won't do much about the old NAS devices and things that will live on forever. Um, but so yes, yeah, some bits of this will last a lot longer than it ever should have, but that's technology. <laughs> Hi, thinking ahead, um, is there a chance that the Samba server will become faster than um, a native Windows primary domain controller, and especially when you're talking about large loads. Can we do better than Microsoft in terms of performance? I, I think we certainly can if we try. Uh, it really depends on what the bottlenecks turn out to be. Um, we've got the, you know, we've got people who are very smart at, at optimising performance, and so you know, there's, there's the potential for it. Um, we played performance games in the past. Microsoft has done some lovely benchmarks showing that we're hideously slow, and then somebody goes and actually fixes a Linux disk subsystem, for example. Now this has happened and has been a useful process. Um, I won't really try and speculate as to the exact performance relative to what Microsoft can achieve. We're doing much the same kind of task matter of whether we've chosen a different enough way to do it, that there's some edge that we can gain. Um, I, I'm really not sure. Um, we're not looking to make the domain controller particularly fast at this point. I mean, I'm not looking to make it slow, but I haven't been running performance numbers on it compared with trying to get it to actually work. Um, but, you know, it, it's a possible, possible thing in the future. Um, and certainly open source allows someone else to come in and do the profiling and say, well, look, that's the problem. That's why it's so slow. And, you know, that's something that nicely farms out to the community because it's not a, you know, you know to run, a profile, run the right profiling tools doesn't necessarily require Samba experience as much as profiling experience, which is a different skill set. So it's possible. Other questions? Um, a question again to the Microsoft representative. I was just wondering, um, has the experience with the Samba team so far um, affected the ongoing development of the Windows platform? I mean to say um, the Windows platform is evolving um, further and further ahead. Um, has the experience with um, what's gone on with Samba so far um, affected that development? Or may, maybe I'm talking about in terms of open standards. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to have to pass on this one. I'm, I'm not a sales guy, so I don't actually know the, you know, 
whether, whether we're impacting the sales of windows or not, that's actually not my role. My role is to work with the community and, and make the development between the uh, organizations work. Um, if I were gold to understand whether we're impacting the sales or not, that would be a conflict for me and I couldn't do my day job. So I, I refuse to be involved in those kind of conversations uh, within the company. Did I misunderstand the question? Oh, okay, thank you for the clarification. Um, the joint work between the, the organizations and the teams has been outstanding um, from our point of view. Uh, we're learning just as much about how to work with you guys as you're learning about how to work with us. And that's an ongoing, we need a dictionary to translate between the Windows lingo and the Linux lingo, and we, con we constantly have to recheck whether we're on the same conversation, and, but we get much better at that. Um, yes, we do try and do many more things with the open protocols. That's obviously a direction that customers, partners, developers worldwide want us to do, regulators, um, those kinds of things. So yes, we're motivated to do all those kinds of things. What we're also working through is a number of things that we've never done before with, with external companies. For instance, the removal of, of the 56-bit encryption in the Win, Win, Windows 7 timeframe. Uh, we're going to try and work out what that means and how to do that, but how do you, you know, you don't sit down and actually work out a process consciously about how to remove stuff. Um, this is going to be a creation process for us and the Samba guys over the next month or so. Um, but I think we're going to get through that and figure out how to, how to bring out, you know, the next generation of both your products and our products without 56-bit. I was hoping to paraphrase that question really succinctly. In your wildest dreams, can you imagine in Windows 9 including some Samba 4 code or some Samba code? <laughs> After all the religious wars are, 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 are resolved, in your wildest dreams. I, I really don't think it's fair to try and look at, we're far more of a worry is the right standards and the right process. Code bases are a minor issue in comparison to getting the protocols right. Okay. I, I, yeah. Yeah. And, no, that's, uh, yeah. Who knows? Okay, any other questions? Oh, up the back, sorry. Can you just elaborate a bit more on the open change and other projects that are having dependencies on the SAM before, what that means and what are we actually seeing happening? So for open change, um, I'm not the expert, I'm a very interested observer of open change and um, what it means for the rest of us is hopefully that um, bits of SAMBA will actually get out there and, and get used. If OpenChange can set the example, then hopefully we'll get other DC RPC applications come up and see, okay, the infrastructure's there, it's on the systems, because that's always the first challenge, is to get the libraries installed. And they're forcing SAMBA 4 out the door, perhaps earlier than some bits otherwise would happen. So it will be there on systems as development headers, and people can do the next DC RPC application. There are plenty of other things that run over that uh, protocol stack that in the past have really been inhibited uh, because Samba was, well, you'd have to put it into Samba and you know, work with us rather than, okay, I just call these libraries. So it could allow other things. Open change is the only big one I know of at the moment, but um, I'm sure Trich can think of a few other you know, ones that are sitting in the wings of, of other protocols that people could attack. Um, but Exchange has been seen there as that big one that people have waited for for so long. Uh, This being the first time I've heard about OpenChange, is it intended for the client or the server, and is anyone actually using it that you're aware of? Like for a tool, real tools? So, um, the Brad's talk's on Friday, so um, go on to that. Um, it's currently, uh, it's a client tool that is looking to do the whole stack as well, but they started on the client. But um, uh, if I quickly flip back to my... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's take a while. Oh, come on. The short version is client. We have command line tools. We have a proxy. We have a microphone. <laughs> so. 
come along on, on Friday, it's apparently about 10 to 3, social science 2, that'll be the little room. Um, don't go to Jonathan Knox's Pink Your Ride talk. No good. I've seen it, it's no good. Um, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, don't know what I was thinking. Don't know what I accepted it. Um, but anyway, we have client side. So you can, using a unmodified, just like the administrators would like you to be using it, that is without look. Um, client side library and command line tools, not just for mail, but for tasks, calendaring, journal, appointment, and, and mail. Um, we have some integration to GUI for those people who are not real men. Yeah, that'd be me. Um, we have a proxy that can do modifying the operations on the fly. And we have the bits of a server that can at least get Outlook to log in. There's still much more work to do, and certainly it's, it's in the project scope. It's just not done quite yet. But if you really want to know how, and you want to know more, apparently 10 to 3 on Friday in Social Science 2. And I think that's my time. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming along. <laughs> <laughs>